Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to our breakdown of this week's PvP changes. In this video, we'll be covering in detail exactly what each change means and which direction we expect the meta to head in next. Many players will be happy to hear that the devs are continuing with the trend of small incremental changes to classes that are either over or underperforming. And this week is no different, as we've seen plenty of changes that absolutely needed to happen. And while you might be surprised to hear a few changes we definitely expected still haven't happened, we're still excited to see the ones that have. But real quick everyone, if you're interested in keeping up with the meta by watching hundreds of arena guides that are released every month, we've got you covered over at skillcap.com slash wow. There you'll find weekly releases of arena commentaries from some of the world's best players, allowing you to follow along as the meta develops to see what changes pros are making to their playstyles while listening along as they explain their choices in real time so that you can improve faster than you would with any other resource. So if you're interested, head on over to skillcap.com slash wow and sign up today. Link in the description below. To get things started, let's take a look at these Holy Paladin nerfs. While they didn't receive any changes to their throughput, which many players believe is the biggest offender of Holy Paladins, given that they can heal through almost anything with relative ease while wings are up, the changes they did receive are actually very meaningful and will hurt the spec's performance quite significantly. First, the change to Ultimate Sacrifice not being affected by the rank 2 upgrade of Blessing of Sacrifice means that Holy Paladins will take the entirety of the damage that you deal to the target that they use Ultimate Sacrifice on. Previously, this would have been reduced by 25% thanks to the rank 2 upgrade, but now that Ultimate Sacrifice will ignore this, it means players will be rewarded for dealing damage into the Ultimate Sacrifice as a means to pressure the Paladin and potentially force CDs like Divine Shield from the Holy Paladin in order for them to keep up with your pressure. What makes this change so important is that Holy will now have to put a lot more thought into just trading Blessing of Sacrifice for any offensive CD as it will be much easier to punish them by continuing to deal damage into the Ultimate Sacrifice. So if a Holy Paladin ever drops this ability on your target after you've already dropped them low and you still have your offensives up, just keep pumping damage into that sack and watch the Holy Paladin struggle to keep up. As for mana changes, although you might think 30% doesn't seem like a lot, this change is actually the biggest one. It essentially equates to something like 17k mana lost in a 5 minute game, placing Holy Paladins as the second worst healer in terms of mana regen. What makes this change so big is that plenty of Holy Paladin matchups were already coming down to mana, with Paladins generally able to keep up with most pressure until they eventually oom. With this now happening more quickly, it's going to make it much harder for Holy Paladins to keep up with comps that are able to prolong the game and take it down to dampening. So what does this mean? Well, for one thing, we definitely expect this change to push Resto Shamans forward as one of the better healers as their mana efficiency is already quite strong. And while this certainly won't kill the Holy Paladin spec, it will at the very least force their comps to play to win as opposed to playing for more drawn out games where they can snatch an easy win in dampening. Next, we've got a couple of mage nerfs. Dampen Magic has seen a change to bring it down to a 10% reduction to magic dots as opposed to the previous 20%. While this change is quite minor and only really affects a select few matchups, such as Shadow Priests and Mages, this talent wasn't always chosen by Mages, which makes this change even less meaningful. The Pyrokinesis nerf, on the other hand, is much more significant, reducing the frequency at which Fire Mages are able to access their Combustion kill window. By now, most of you have probably realized that outside of Combustion, Fire Mages are really not that threatening. And with this nerf, you'll have even less to worry about as stopping fireballs between combustion will slow down the pace at which they can reset their combustion cooldown even more. This is definitely a welcome change. However, it won't take mages away from the top. They'll still be one of, if not the best casters, just because of how insane their combustion window still is. But with that being said, when you pair this pyrokinesis nerf with the holy paladin nerfs, there's a very strong possibility that the ever popular fire mage holy paladin composition type becomes significantly weaker, potentially leading to more variety in this week's upcoming AWC tournaments. Lastly, we've got a handful of buffs, mostly to underperforming and underrepresented specs, the first of which is to Unholy DK. So far, Shadowlands hasn't been that great to Unholy, and we've seen players of the class exclusively rely on its frost spec to perform at the highest level. This was initially made quite clear by the fact that Unholy DKs we're no longer using their signature and trademark ability, Necrotic Strike in PvP, given just how weak it was. This change is effectively a 50% buff to the spell, making it once more desirable for Unholy DKs to use. Although it's possible a 4% buff to bring it up to 8% was needed, 
it's still good to see this buff as it absolutely was. Although it's possible a 4% buff to bring it up to 8% would have been more appropriate, it's still good to see this buff as it absolutely was necessary. And pairing this change with the virulent plague nerf for Vert means that Unholy DKs are on the receiving end of a really great set of buffs that should hopefully see this back start to work again at higher MMRs. This of course remains to be seen, as Unholy DK pressure was very low prior to these changes, but at the very least, we definitely expect to start seeing veterans of the class at least start to experiment once again with the spec. Next, we've got a couple of hunter changes, the first of which to the MM variety. While the buff to careful aim is certainly a big one, hunters currently play with the explosive shot talent in PvP, which offers them some burst damage when the opposing team is unable to dispel it. However, given that every marksmanship hunter plays with careful aim in PvE, this buff means hunters may consider opting for careful aim, which theoretically should provide more overall damage and more consistent burst during every kill setup. And given that the most popular MM hunter comp, Jungle Cleave was typically having issues with just about missing out on a kill during their setups. This added damage might be just enough to tip the scale over and give Jungle exactly what it needed to make its setups more potent. The other change for Hunters is rather unexpected, given that BM has largely been untouched in PvP for a very long time. We've seen the 20% nerf to Bestial Wrath in PvP reverted, giving the possibility of BM Hunters to start seeing representation again at higher MMRs. So far this expansion, the spec faded into complete irrelevancy, pretty much not showing up at the top of the ladder at all. But given that BM has access to a stun in the form of Intimidation, something that MM does not have, it's possible that BM Hunters may actually perform a little better in comps that lack stunts, for example with a Rep Paladin or Enhancement Shaman. With that being said, it is of course a bit of a stretch to say that BM will be a good spec again just because of this buff, but much like the Unholy changes, this will at least give players a reason to experiment and see how good it actually is. And speaking of a revert to previous PvP nerfs, Frost Mages have also received the same treatment, with Glacial Spike and Ray of Frost seeing their damage nerfs reverted. We've previously already seen a few damage buffs to Frost Mages, so it's definitely on the devs' radar to make Frost Mage a relevant spec in PvP once again. With that being said, the spec itself is definitely more of a dampening one than fire, and if we start to see Resto Druids also start to pick up again as players get more gear, there's a strong possibility that Frost Mage Resto Druid becomes the meta again next season. For now though, we don't feel these changes are enough to warrant Frost having a solidified place in the meta just yet. Finally, we have a couple of changes to Mistweaver Monks, and these are certainly very welcome. The PvP talent, Chrysalis, has been buffed to further reduce the cooldown of Life Cocoon, and if you remember, Mistweaver Monks in BFA, who relied on the Burst of Life Azerite trait to lower the CD of Life Cocoon, they were quite difficult to deal with, as they seemingly had Cocoon ready for almost every kill window you would set up. And while this won't bring the cooldown to as low as 55 seconds as it was in BFA, it's still a great buff, as we've seen Mistweavers excel in the past when this cooldown has been lowered. In addition, their mana regeneration has been buffed by 20%, and given that Mistweavers currently have great throughput but struggle a ton with mana, this is another perfect change that might allow them to start popping up again and finding their niche in the meta against specific comps. Despite all these changes, which are great ones, we're still very surprised that a few outliers have not been touched. Given the recent performance of prop paladins in the AWC and the sheer unenjoyment that practically the entire player base feels when they play against one, it's strange that we haven't seen the spec touched at all. Other complaints, such as the RNG factor within the Rep Paladin Conduit ringing clarity, the overwhelming strength of Intervene, the ridiculousness of a Holy Paladin's Awakening Talent, the strength of a Frost DK's Heartstop Aura, the power of an Enhancement Shaman's Offheals, and so on, all seem to be completely ignored. Still though, with buffs happening much more frequently than nerfs, we can at least hope to see the strength of every spec brought up to the strength of these outliers with the incredibly potent tools that can single-handedly win games for their teams. Alright everyone, that about does it for this one. We're certainly excited to see these regular changes and hope this trend continues over the next year to bring WoW PvP balance between the classes and specs closer than it ever has been before. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed and hit that subscribe button and bell to be notified the moment we release all of our Shadowlands PvP content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.